All right, that's the self family day with Simple Suburban Living, and today I'm going to show you how to build an LED homemade grow light. Okay, so something that I've wanted to do for quite some time is to upgrade my uh, grow lighting that I have here in the basement aquaponic system to use something a little bit better and a little bit more efficient. Um, the lights that I built here, uh, it's been about two years ago. I put a video up for that. It's been pretty popular as far as grow lights concerned. These have been working great. There's nothing wrong with them. Uh, I don't think that uh, these are going to work better or worse than, than the ones that I have here. Uh, these ones cost me about 40 bucks, 40 or 45 dollars, I believe, to build. But then you also had to buy the light bulbs to put in them, uh, which can get expensive. They're a little cheaper now than they were when I first started building these. Now LEDs have come down quite a bit in price, and I think I can get away with building a homemade grow light out of LED strip lighting. I'm going to be using these... Uh, these real or strip lights here. There's all kinds of different ones you can get. These ones are labeled as a grow light. And so uh, I'm gonna test these out and see how well they work. You could also just use regular 6,500 Kelvin, uh, you know, strip lighting and red or blue strip lighting uh, and try to experiment with different colors and all that kind of good stuff. So to get your, your full spectrum. But these ones are designed for growing and so we're gonna see how well they do. So I've already built a kind of a frame for this and then I'm gonna take you through how I put that together and also uh, how I'm gonna get these uh, lights installed and what I'm gonna be using to power them. And then we're gonna get this one set up and put in the system and then uh, we'll do a follow-up video down the road on uh, how well it worked. So let's dig in and see what we've got put together here. Okay, so I'm gonna take you through how I uh, got this kind of put together here and I didn't go into too much detail on me building this actual framing for the light because you could really do anything you wanted for this. Um, this is just what I chose to do. You could be very simple and just make a square box. It really depends on the size of your grow beds and all this stuff. This is uniquely designed to fit over the top of a 55 gallon drum. And that's, so that's what I'm using here. Right? Again, you can make this custom to whatever you want. But basically what I did was I started with a piece of this uh, melamine. And this is a quarter inch melamine. It's very cheap, I think it was it's less than ten dollars for a sheet a four by eight sheet of this stuff so very inexpensive um, pretty easy to work with and it does have enough flex to it for what i needed and it's got this reflective coating on it so i don't need to do any type of coating or anything like that on the inside of the light so this is kind of the the base of this thing and basically what i did was i made a frame for it and put it in here at a kind of like a parabola so um, this gives a good light reflection. My LEDs are going to be in here, and this gives you a good right, light reflection in, in all different directions, straight down and, and side to side as well. Uh, that's why I like to use this shape. Now you can go flat and just make a square box and put your LEDs in there, whatever you want to do. But this is just how I chose to do that. So basically what I did was I just cut some 2x4s. I started by uh, cutting these down to the length that I needed, and then uh, ripping these down to an inch and a half by inch and a half square stock. So I had some nice square uh, framing here to, to use as the, the sides. And then I set my uh, table saw at about a 20 or 25 degree angle. And I ran these all through to get uh, a slot cut in basically right into the edge here on an angle. And that's the melamine fits right into that slot that was cut with the table saw. Now I did have to run this through twice in the table saw to make the slot wide enough to get my quarter inch melamine to slide into it. And it does go in pretty deep. It goes in almost three quarters of the way through on an angle uh, into this uh, square stock on the corners here. So the melamine just fits right into that slot on the edges. Um, once I got that cut, I put the melamine into it and then I uh, kind of forced this up against my workbench and uh, squeezed it together so that we bend it, you know, bowed that out into that parabola shape. And then I just used some of this uh, plywood. This is three quarter inch pine plywood. I scrap I had le left over from another project. Four inches here on this one. And this is the ends of this. And so I just kind of I did pre-drill and countersink these and I just used some drywall screws to screw this together and that holds it into this parabola shape. So um, 
again, this is just the design that I have here and you could do whatever you wanted with it. So I'm gonna take you in here now and I haven't done this yet. So this will be a little more detailed on how I'm rigging up the LED lighting and how I'm powering the system using a computer power supply. So I'll start with that. Okay, so these LED strip lights um, that I'm using here, this is a 60 watt strip, it's five meters, and you can find these things everywhere. I'll put a link to this, this these LED lights in the description. Um, I've got a couple of these strips that I have, uh, you know, toyed around with in different uh, for different things. Um, but these ones here, again, are, are designed for grow lighting. So they have red and blue spectrum lights on them. And uh, again, this whole strip is 60 watts. So this is gonna make up one light, one full strip of this. Um, and so what a, you can buy power supplies for these and just hook it up that way. That's totally fine if you wanna do that. But uh, I'm not big into buying extra stuff. And I just happen to have a lot of extra power supplies for computers laying around because I'm a computer tech. And uh, this is why I save things like this because these can come in very handy so if you want to use a power supply from a computer um, to power anything 12 volt the first thing you need to do is obviously um, cut all the wires and clips and stuff like that off them you don't need any of those molex connectors or anything but uh, you should have a green wire usually it's a light green or dark green that comes out of the uh, power supply unit and then you'll have a bunch of black wires here um, the black wires are all grounds so I just picked, you know, you pick any one you want to. Twist the, uh, the green wire together with the ground, and that's basically your switch. This goes to the motherboard normally on a computer, and when you press the power button, um, it, sends, you know, it sends a signal to the power supply, basically power through this wire and turns it on. So you have to have this twisted together in order for this to be live and on. So I'll put a little wire nut on that, and then that'll be that. Now each one of these different colored wires here has a different voltage. Um, our yellow wires here are 12 volt rails. And so there's three of them on this power supply for various things in a computer normally. And so these uh, yellow ones are the only ones I'm gonna use. And I'm just gonna use three of any one of these grounds as well. So I'll basically just pick one ground, one 12 volt wire here. This will go to one grow light. And then this here will go to another grow light. And then I'll probably just, use, I'll probably just split these off um, and tie it off your wire nut them off to go to all four grow lights. Now this power supply here is just my test. This is only a 100, 110 watt power supply. So obviously I can't power four 60 watt lights with this, this supply, that's too much. Um, this is just gonna be my test for this one light. And once I test it out and everything works, um, I have another power supply, a bigger one that I'm gonna permanently mount in the system that will uh, wire everything together. Okay, so I've just kind of figured out uh, you know, how to, as closely as I can, evenly uh, cut this, these light strips into enough sections to, to make up my light here. And basically, all the uh, sections have these spots where you can see there's a black line and, and some copper conductors. And you can use a pair of scissors to just cut right through the center of that. And they cut pretty easily. So that's all we're going to do here. So each one of these strips has these tiny copper connectors that we, we cut through. But this, this uh, LED strip is coated in this silicone or whatever it is, some type of plastic or silicone. And so you have to take a utility knife or some type of knife and cut away the, the silicone away from the ends there so we can get to these contacts. So I'm doing that on all of these and then I'm gonna stick them on um, I'm going to use, these do have a self-adhesive on them, but I'm going to actually also use some super glue or some Gorilla Glue just a little bit on the back of these because I want to make sure these things don't fall off. They're going to be around moisture, so.
Okay, so I'm just working on getting all of the LED strips connected together, soldered together here. And basically what I chose to do is I have two power uh, leads <coughs> that are basically that's how they came. Uh, the both ends of the LED strips had a power lead already connected to them. So I have two power leads that come in the, the center and then I'm going to split it and it goes out each way and it kind of snakes along that way. Um, it's To me it's better than connecting it at one end and having it snake all the way to the other end although I'm sure that works fine. Uh, this way it just kind of splits the power a little bit so there's less, less loss throughout the strip. So um, all I'm using is again this thermostat wire and some of these joints already had solder on them because they it looks like they soldered some together at the factory where I cut it but uh, all I'm doing is just adding a little bit of solder to these wires ahead of time heating it up and then just touching them to these joints Okay, all that's left to do is do one final test. I have been testing it after each solder joint here, but uh, we'll see if it all works. All right, it looks pretty good. happy with how it turned out uh, for a very inexpensive I mean it's less than about 32 or 33 dollars put into this uh, project so far um, so very inexpensive a lot less expensive than uh, my other lights that I had here even though these were only a $40 grow light you still had to buy bulbs for it and so that you know depending on what bulbs you use that could put you over the top with that so um, this is a lot less expensive it runs a lot a lot cooler it's got a lot less power consumption at 60 watts versus the uh, 200 watts that I was running over here with these um, the, only th the only thing time will tell is how well it works and so of course I always do a how well it works video as I learn and experiment with these types of things and so I'll release that uh, when I have some data for you. Um, the only thing I am concerned about is uh, the Lux readings I was getting here were only just over a thousand whereas over here they were over six or seven thousand and so there was definitely a big uh, light power difference between the two. However, the plants do only photosynthesis or, or photosynthesize, I guess you'd say, um, in the red and blue spectrum. So this is a lot more efficient. We have a lot of wasted light over here, whereas this is more targeted. And so uh, potentially this should work better with a lot lower power consumption. So we'll see. Um, I'll probably do some side-by-side -side tests down the road, uh, CFL versus LED, and I'll let you guys know how that turns out uh, as those uh, things take place. So. Uh, we've got a lot more aquaponics uh, renovation stuff to do. Fish tanks will probably be next, and that's kind of a big project, so it'll probably take a little time to get that out. Uh, I appreciate your patience with everything, uh, following along with this project. Uh, but I'm excited to get this thing fired up. I'm excited. To, I've got a lot of space ready to plant, and uh, I'm excited to get, to get back into the aquaponics stuff and, and really get a, a good producing garden down here. So, As always, guys, please hit thumbs up on the video. Just reach up there and tap that thumbs up buddy, uh, button. It makes a huge difference for me. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. I always ask for that. And uh, you know, if you like to get updates on uh, the things that we have releasing over here, all the videos when they come out, you want to hit subscribe, and, and then you'll get updated on those kinds of things. Um, I've got a lot of other related videos as well that I'll put links to in the card system up here at the top. Look for that little eye or the little uh, cards that pop up along the top there. Um, related lighting videos and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, check those out. And uh, as always, let me know if you have comments or questions or anything else. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.